So thank you, everyone. I know it's kind of complicated as it's to a talk during the morning. It's complicated for me. I mean, I just wake up too. So yeah, I'm from Argentina. Uh, last week I was in Korea for another conference and I lost my flight. The next one flight was during the morning, was delayed for five hours. So I almost didn't come here, but I'm here. I'm Yesi Navarro. I'm from Gordo, Argentina. Uh, I'm 26. I work in like an application security. I do some medical hacking stuff too. Uh, and that's social media if you have any question after this one, but I think we have some time. Uh, and fun, as a fun fact, I like sneakers and also I made some clothes in my free time and all this stuff. Just for your information. Uh, we're going to see today. Uh, first of all, a little introduction, how I found the system, uh, who was the, the, the Brazilian arcade where I found this stuff. The Argentinian company, owner of the entire system. Uh, what is AIDOR and broken authorization? Android application, account cover and race condition. Some stuff about the, there was a website for bookings and that. Uh, some site servers and NFC and conclusions. But first of all, I disclaimer. Some of these techniques and processors are not completely legal. So I recommend don't do this one at your home. But if you do that, if you, and if you, and if you found something, report that. Just don't be an asshole and just be defacing website like, X was here and by hack it, hack it by X or something like that. So don't be an asshole. Now we can start. I divide the talk in 10 different stages, like the games. And the first of all is introduction. Last December, I went to Sao Paulo, Brazil for Hacker to Hacker, hack, ah, Hacker to Hackers conference. It's a really nice conference. So with technical stuff and that, I really love that. But also they have a lot of parties. Like, the party started on Friday and the conference is Saturday and Sunday. So that was so fucking nice. Uh, <laughs> in one of those parties, uh, I met a girl from Brazil and the next day we, we went on a date. And we take some beers and we were walking into the, into the mall arc, into the mall. And I found an arcade place. And after some beers, why not play some games? So I found this stuff, like a totem for buy the cars, charge, check, check your, your money and that. And when I saw that, I saw that we're running an old version of Windows. <laughs> and I say, okay, maybe there is something interesting inside of this one. So, stage number two, or one. Yeah, it's one. But this is number two, not really. <laughs> um, I, we, we bought the car. That was just the car. There's no, there was the name over there, but there's not so much data. So I did a little go, go buster over there, uh, just with the normal dictionary that you can find in GitHub. And I didn't found so much information, just that, that there was a PHP website who was running a Drupal. The info.php was uh, public too. Uh, that was running a really old version of PHP with the file upload zone. So, and there is a really interesting research from Brett Moore from 2011. But for exploit that stuff, you need a LFI. And in this case, we don't have the stuff. So there was not so much data interesting into that, into that web, web server. So I did a little uh, DNS search and I found another subdomain called plus. Ah, that one is the GitHub code for the here code for to find their DNS. It's fine to say something use those. And, and I found the website for like, for manage the application, the car. So you can create an account, check where you play, charge some, charge some money and that. But that will be running on some kind of middleware and that, so you cannot get some more information or try to do some in injection into do that. And I spent like three, two weeks trying to exploit the stuff. And I didn't get any lucky. So at the moment I say, okay, there's no talk this year. That's fine. And then we move to the number two. I turned the car and look at the bottom and there was some kind of website over there with another company. And I start to Google it and I found, okay, we are, we are leading the world way. We have like our system in more than seven countries, more than 2000 uh, customers and that. We provide also a cashless system for this, for that, for that one. Uh, but we are not just in arcade. We are, we are in amusement park. We are in escape park, escape room and all this stuff. So I check another stuff and I found all the customer and there was a lot of stuff and I say, yeah, I, I want to try to hack this shit right now. So <laughs> I run another DNX stuff, and I found the documentation of the API version 2, 
and that say, okay, for, for generate the token, the authorization token, you need the API key and the API secret. But we didn't have that one. And also the API key and API secret were doing some encode with SHA-1, another SHA-1 too. That was kind of weird stuff. And when you try to send a request to the API, you get a 200 status code. But in the body, you have a status success, success false, a status code 403, and error access denied. So, eh. uh, we still need the API key and the API secret for that stuff. But I say, what happens if we delete the version 2 on the pad? So I send a request, and uh, the success was okay. So success to true, and we get all the data for that endpoint. So we know there is no type of authorization or authentication into the endpoint in the just slash API. So I run a lot of GoBuster for that stuff, and we found a lot of different endpoints for that one without without authentication. We have some of with 200 okay, with some with with 200 uh, with 200 without data, and some 400 with some errors, like the same who I saw uh, uh, just now. And uh, nice. number three about the IDORs. Well, IDORs is when you can access to different objects. They are yours or not. And you, you can check all the different stuff. In this case, I, I try to check my car and I say, okay, you have uh, 15 bucks. You have these, these tickets and that. So what happens if when I, when I want to check another car? I get the same data with from other car without authentication and that. And the same stuff happens with the customers. You can get all the data from the customer, the name, the email, the pictures, where they live, where they play, which car they have, and that. I, I wrote a little script in Python just for check which customer have a cars and which of them have some money into them, just for check. <laughs> <laughs> and there was 2,000 installation with the same vulnerabilities. Uh, the short answer was yes. So I start to check the web page and they say, okay, we have some arcades in Brazil, we have some stuff in Praga, we have some stuff in Saudi Arabia, uh, Spain, uh, UK, and also there is a big roller coaster in Vegas close to DEFCON. <laughs> and they are running the same system for the arcade and for a roller coaster. We can say the name, but we already know which one is that one. So uh, at the moment I was this guy, I mean, after all of those misconfigurations, and now it's the state for number four. When I was checking some different endpoints in the API, I found this one who say, okay, you can use the kiosk, the same application, the web application, or you have the mobile stuff. So I checked the um, APK, APK, APK combo, APK PR, and I found all of the list of the same application from the same, for the same customer. So I get one of those, I decompile them with just APK tool, and we have all the data because that was of, that was that wasn't obfuscated, but we need to make this one more pretty. So I just just yeah, it's beautiful for that stuff, and then I just run a grab for get some keys. So now we have the endpoint, the account code, the URL, and the IP key and the API secret. I get some other application just for check that I was okay. Sorry, it's so fucking hot here. To check, and they were using the same API and endpoint, but the API, the API key and the API secrets and the account code was different. So now we now we know they are using the same endpoint, they uh, but they have an, a header called account code to check to just make the difference between one customer and the other one, and that was actually a, a 13 ex, a character hexadecimal. So with the endpoint and the account code, we have the company, but also we have the list of the company in, in their web page. So. We have the list, we can use Google, and we don't need account code because certain hexadecimal character is kind of complicated, bless you. It's kind of complicated to try to find that. What I'm saying, you can call to the, to the, main, to the main API with, a, with, with account code and you get the data. Okay, this one is amusement park from Ecuador. But if you search the name of the company, you found that into the map who I show you, and you consume directly that API without any account code, you have the same data, the same data. So you can get access to all the different endpoints. There was an endpoint for charge credit. Do you remember you, you need, we need to do some SHA-1 to SHA-1 to the BAE key and API secret? So I send a request with some that, that, that data and we get the token for consuming the stuff. 
And that says something, okay, you have this offer, you can charge 200 bucks, that one, this one was a, a US company, I think. And if you want to scanner the sale manually, you, you just need to send this data to the, to the post request, and that's fine. You generate the token, and that's okay. And if you're trying to charge credit or some bonus, you, you, you just need to set on true the deliver true param, and we're going to do that by automatic stuff. So that's fine, but I don't want to be in jail for that stuff. So in Argentina, $200 is a lot. So. I started to read a little bit more the API, the, the APK, the APK, and there was almost three endpoints, all of them in plain text. And also you have all the params and the body for the post. Uh, for example, this one, that was the update customer. And you say, okay, it's application JSON. There was an authorization token, but that didn't check that. They didn't check that, so that's fine. And we have the post body. In this case, what's the first name, the last name, uh, the, the email and the newsletter. But I pay more attention to the email endpoint because maybe we can do some stuff with that shit too. So now we can do some account takeover and raise condition. Uh, we check this one, this one was my, my account. And we have first name demo, last name test, and the email was just a web hook site, just a normal one. And if you send a post, with a con call and all the stuff. But just with the email parameter, per parameter uh, we can change that one. So now we can do some demo about the account cover stuff. In this case, I'm just going to log it in with my account. I'm so bad at editing videos, so I don't know how long it takes. Maybe like minutes or something like that. <laughs> so we have the account over there. I, can, I, create, I use some random webhook site for that stuff. I send a request and I say, okay, 200, okay, status, status code 200, two. Uh, we want to log it in, forgot your password because this is not our account, so we don't know which password is it. We send the email, the email request for that stuff, receive that one. I think, so. yeah. We can change the password, we can say just test 123, and the same. We're gonna go, we're gonna go to log it in again. Maybe the, maybe the video could be more fast, but I know for the next time, so. We get the email, we log it in, and we have the same data than the other account, because and the customer, the owner of the account didn't receive any email, hey, your password changed or your email was changed. So that happened with my account, but that some bad actor could do that for the old account, all the accounts, and they have access for the entire, uh, for the cars, and you, he can check where they play and that. So that was kind of complicated stuff. Risk condition is when, when you want to try to access to the same object at the same time. Um, there is some type kind of complicated race condition stuff too. In this case, just for, that was a normal one. But there's a port trigger port that if you want to do some different labs and that, that's nice. So in my case, I found this, this endpoint who say, okay, you can get some different prices. Uh, like, okay, you install the application and you're going to get 300 tickets. Uh, so I wrote a normal Python script. As I say, it's just a normal stuff. I just send some requests using the thread, the thread function in Python. And that's fine. I just send 100. And when I run that one, I get six, seven hits, and I check the history, and I say, okay, you have all those tickets that was fine, that was running okay. But there was another rewards. For example, in US, you can get reward for like $150. And as I say, I didn't do that stuff too, because I don't want to be in jail for that stuff. I continue <laughs> searching the DNS. And there was an interesting endpoint about booking, so I entered in the website. And that was a website for check. I mean, in some places, you can book the entire arcade or part of them uh, for your birthday or for your company party or something like that. I run a GoBuster again, and I found some interesting directories, uh, TMP uploads and data. In TMP, we just found some different logs for that stuff. Uh, you have some XML comments. You have some data about the, the cashiers. You have some IP and, and ports for check, but that was not so much interesting stuff. 
Uh, for the uploads uh, path, I wrote a little Python script too, just for fun, for, to try to find some diff some more interesting stuff because there was a lot of different images and that, but that's fine. In this case, I found three folders called Facturación Argentina. It's called Invoice Argentina. And uh, when I searched that one, there was uh, two certificates. Uh, in Argentina, we use those certificates for generate different invoice as the name of the company. So you can use that one for say, okay, my company, uh, receive money from Ignacio or other person. But if there is the invoice, the invoice certificates in another path need to be the invoices. So in the data, in the data path, we can find all the different invoices from Argentina with all the customer data, uh, where they are, the address, name, how, how much they pay and that. And there was almost 600, 700 uh, invoices. Booking manager and another endpoint of the, in that web server, we can get all the reservation ba uh, mails, but they ask for a for a QR code for a code or the name or last name. But if you just press enter a uh, search, you can get all the different <laughs> all the different bookings, and you can modify them. You can check all the money. You can change that. You can set a negative tip. So I don't know how that works. I don't know if they pay you or something like that. Uh, you have some different errors too, like in PHP, that we're using code igniter, for example. There was some SQLite too, but no. Uh, as I say, well, that's, that's just data, that data too. And then I say, okay, I think with this data, it's okay for the talk, but I really want to get into the a little bit more. So I run a shooting with the domain and that, uh, or just, just the name of the company. And I found some interesting stuff about some different size servers. In the first case, they have the send desk uh, public, so you can create an account, and you can check all the different files into the send desk, the different documents and that. And there, they, they have some videos, and in the videos you can see the different IP key, some, uh, some, uh, some username and passwords, you can get some emails, you can get some endpoints too. And uh, there was some, also some network diagram if you want to get an idea how this, the, the connection into the different places. Also, I found, I found an amusement park in Spain. And each, each of those are redirected to you to the, uh, kind of da admin dashboard or something. I tried to exploit that one, but there was so, they have some security into that one. But they had a problem. They were exposed in the web pack. So you can check all the code of the application. So you can get all the different, the different API. For example, this one, you can check all the different machines into the, the amusement park. And you have the state, you have the IPA, the public IPA for those two. And you can do some stuff if you want. I didn't. And also you have the code, you have the different roles. Okay, you can be an admin, an editor, or a guest. And also this one, the, the code for the login page. And I say, okay, if you had a 200, okay, just, uh, get me some data and that. But there was, okay, if but you have a 407 or 420, you can do, you can do another stuff. So I say, okay, what, what is 420? At the beginning, I thought he were talking about weed, but no. <laughs> when you enter the 420 code, you get the same, like, uh, screen, that re redirect to you to another screen and, and that say, okay, set the new password for this user. So you can set the new password for the user that you want. So we are coming back for the same shit that we started, but it's the same. I don't want to show you the, the same stuff. So about the NFC cards, uh, well, the card who I showed you was running just, that was a micro classic NFC card, but I don't want to show you, I don't want to explain what is NFC and all that because I think most of now have that run. In, in the worst case, you have an interesting article from Chim Alonso in, in that web, in that QR code. Uh, you can read the, read the, queue, the NFC with different tools and that, but in my case, I just used the Flipper Zero, and that was fine. Uh, in this case, we have some data like, okay, this one of my fair classic, you have the UID and some stuff about ISO and other stuff, but doesn't matter. How, that, how looks inside the NFC card is they have a 16 blocks with 16, 16, ah, 16 sector with four blocks each, each one. And uh, you have different bytes for the keys and that. Uh, in this case, the car was almost empty. The, the, um, 
the key A and the key B was the same one, so it was cheating by, by default. And there was some just data over there. Uh, but when I tried to uh, move that one to the, the decimal number, I found the same data. That, that one was just the name of the number of the car. So you can just change that stuff, and that's going to be fine. So the car was empty. The key A and B was, was setting by default, and that's fine. But also, when I started singing the talk, I was supposed to go to the different arcades and get some cars from there, make the, the difference between each one. But to be honest, I was so fucking lazy for doing that. So I say, okay, I need more data for the talk. And in this case, I was reading the code. And that says something like, if you're running on iOS, if you are not running in, into iOS and you have the NFC play on, you can do something. So in my case, I was running iOS, so I asked my dad for a headphone. And I said, okay, maybe in this one we can get something. Uh, in this case, I just enter into my account. After we log in and that, we can go to the play car sector and we can emulate all the web, all the different cars with our phone if they have NFC, obviously. But that's fine because we don't need a flipper zero or something like that. We just can attach the different cars to our phone or we can do some account takeover or something like that and we get all the car data and we can use that directly into the park. So that's fine. Uh, for the ending, that's fine. In Switzerland, fortunately, there is no client here, or fortunately for you guys, but they, they don't have some clients here. Or maybe they have, but they are not in the, into the website, so you can go to some different arcades and check. Don't do that. <laughs> in Europe, they have a lot of customers. I show you, but Spain is like the main base here in Europe. You have some in Turkey, Netherlands, Sweden, so you can just go there and just play, it's fine. And conclusions. At the 2024, we can still find some basic bugs and misconfiguration in all the different web system for a big companies too. So the zero days are fun, but maybe this one is more easy too. At FCCOPS culture could help a lot to the different companies to try to fix all the vulnerabilities at the beginning of the development um, uh, cycle and you don't need to wait for the production the environment to fix that shit. Security, education, and training, like the same as always, so you can teach for all the people like HR, software, and all the stuff. And I have an update for you guys because when I present this talk on April in Beside Colombia, uh, they say I sent a lot of email and I didn't answer those. But after I came here and started saying again, hey, 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 and they answer. And I say, okay, Ignacio, thank you. We can work well with us. So now we are working together to try to fix all the vulnerabilities. Or at least I, that's what I think because I sent my, the report like two weeks ago and I didn't answer it yet. So I don't know. At least they know they have some stuff. So if you found something, report that shit. Don't be an asshole. And if someone sent something to you, pay some attention because it's just an email. I mean, I, we are not talking about money or something like that. It's just, hey, I found something. Okay, thank you. We're gonna fix it. Or thank you. We already know that, but we don't. We, we don't. We don't wanna fix it. So it's fine. It's just don't be an asshole too. And I think that's all. And we are okay with the time. I think we have ten minutes. But if you have any question, you can do it now or at the barbecue later. So that's fine. Thank you.